You can't see it right now, but it's snowing again, and it's been snowing nonstop all day. Yesterday was about 20 degrees Celsius. That's nice and warm. Anyways, it's time to start making the van look really pretty and covering up all the nasty insulation. I also wanted to point out, I will go back here and show you in a minute. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of light coming through. I've tinted all the windows and I removed the rear cargo light. So I think this is all the light we can get. Nothing. First, what has to get done is we have to install some studs because I want to be as smart as I can to reinforce the van for when I start mounting stuff to the walls. And also, I'm going to bring you back here. Hang on, I got to take off my messy shoes because we're in my house now. Uh-huh, there we go. That's not so bad. So you're oh, back with this nightmare. But that's because what I did was add essentially a second layer of insulation so far just on the walls, on the side walls. The roof still has nothing. If all goes according to plan for what I want to do, this I'm going to cover with just a half inch of the Pink Panther Foam Ular insulation boards. The walls are about between R10 and R11, depending on which side you kind of look at, because I just wanted to use up all the scraps. I didn't want to throw anything out. So you can see like this is the second layer, and this is like, this is a piece, this is a piece, that's one piece. Where is it? Oh, it's not in here right now. But I attached this, this second layer with Gorilla Glue spray adhesive. I couldn't find the 3M stuff at Home Depot, so I just grabbed a bottle of the Gorilla Glue and it worked like a hot damn. Because I did the first layer with spray foam, right? And it was, I don't, I'm so quick to want to say it was a nightmare. It wasn't a nightmare, but it took a lot longer and it's messy. It gets, as soon as you get a little bit on you, it is sticky and a very hard to get off. I've still got stuff solidified to my nails. It's crazy. The benefit of using the spray foam is I've created an insulated layer between the metal of the van and the foam board, right? So that's a huge plus, I'm sure. But that spray adhesive was so easy to work with and it's so quick to set. I could have had all of these insulation boards up in one day guaranteed, but it wouldn't have been as insulated, I don't think. We'll never know, but the spray adhesive is super easy to work with. That's how all these boards went up. I did them all yesterday. Highly recommend that. And if I was to do it again, I would probably just use the spray adhesive, stick them to the walls, and then just seal around the outside with spray foam. I'll keep that in the memory banks for next time. <laughs> I'm gonna take down these few boards that I had pressed up. The reason that I had these ones anchored is the poly style board is not very flexible, unlike the GPS board. This stuff's super flexible. So even with the spray adhesive, this these guys kept kind of popping off. So they've been up all night with these boards putting pressure on them. So we're gonna take all that off, make sure that's all fine, and then uh, start measuring some studs. This is one of the boards that I'll be using for my studs. This is just leftover scrap from the hardwood subfloor that Chris and I installed. That's rock solid. That's not coming off. That's awesome. I believe this is four. Yeah, so these are one by four pine boards. I've already got one up. I did it yesterday just to see. <laughs> now I used self-drilling screws to put it in. You can see it's not pretty. One of the first things I realized, and it was I, I, I had read it previously, and then my experience just solidified what they had told me, is that you're going to run into problems when you're attaching studs to the van walls. Nothing scientific, nothing's proper. There's no holes. None of these screws went into any sort of holes or gaps like this. I have this mounted on a spot like this, where it's thick, right? But you can see there is an error. That's not actually a screw. That was just a hole left over from a screw because that bad boy went in there and then just spun and spun and spun in the metal. So it's, uh, what's it called? I want to say hit and miss, but I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's actually the expression I'm looking for. But anyways, uh, this was my tester. It went up, but here's the other thing too. One of the big things I hear with van life when they start building is that people don't take into consideration the fact that all of the fixtures that you install in your van have to basically be earthquake proof because your van is always in motion unless you're just not driving anywhere. And all of the vibrations from driving are gonna eventually cause you a lot of problems down the line. So I'll show you when I get to the next stud, but what I've done is not only are there bolts here, and this is 
believe me, this is on there solid. I have it on hand, so why not? I also hit this stud, and I will hit every other stud with, with that heavy-duty construction adhesive, because why not? These don't need to come off. They are my anchor points. They need to be on there as solid as possible, and I think that's probably my best bet. So that's what we're doing. Let's get to it. Initially what I wanted to do, of course, was have these pine boards running down the length of the van ribs. But of course, they're not gonna bend and contour to that rib. So like I did with the first stud is I'm just gonna do smaller pieces and attach them to where the ribs are the thickest. And then that gives me more to mount to. And then what I realized yesterday, what I thought would be a good idea is at the top, because I would love at some point somewhere to have cabinets that come down maybe about here and open up this way well they're gonna need something to anchor into and i've got this these boards so they're eight feet this guy will fit almost perfectly right there so i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give it a quick second thought just to make sure this is what i want to do so i'm going a little bit more tutorial on this one i'm not really sure why maybe so if it all falls apart of me i can go back and figure out what the hell i did wrong this is the construction adhesive i'm going to be using pl premium max so I'm gonna hit all of these areas where this board will touch, hold it up there for five minutes or so, and then we are screwing in these 10 by one and a half self-drilling screws using a good old impact driver. And self-drilling screws and an impact driver make everything so easy. Although you will notice, maybe you won't be able to see it on camera. When you start putting the screws in, they tend to start pushing the board out because the sheet metal of the van is quite hard to get through, so. Yeah, let's see how this goes. I say that a lot. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> okay, that was easier than I thought it would gonna be being such a long board. That smaller one gave me a lot more trouble yesterday but so far what each rib only has one bolt in it i'm probably going to put two just for added measure but you got to remember that construction adhesive is on there as well so of course it's not cured right now but that you boy <laughs> that is solid there's this is not scientific this is very much matt's diy or di diy do yourself it Ooh, that one sunk in so nice. I hope I didn't pierce the outside wall of the van. The idea is I try to give enough force so that the screw goes in and it sinks into the wood far enough that it's flush with the board so that when I put the MDF panel up, there's not like little bumps. This was the most, I think so far, the most nerve wracking thing because now I'm putting holes in the van. Granted, not in like the actual walls, just the ribs, but these are like permanent fixtures now. Essentially, well, nothing's permanent, right? But putting the insulation in is like, yeah, that's a big step, but it could always be ripped out. It would be a pain in the butt, but it could be ripped out. Then we go outside, there's gonna be holes all on the outside. There shouldn't be, these are one and a half inch screws. The stud is one inch, and there's way more than just a half an inch of rib here, so. If my calculations are correct, there shouldn't be any holes in my ship. Stop blowing holes in my ship! Name that movie. It's pretty easy. Give it the test. Not a lot of places to grab it here. That's pretty freaking solid, man. Okay, I guess we are going to Home Depot to find a couple more studs. So it's got two more of the eight foot boards. Got the coffee, because it's still kind of chilly out here. And I think it's this drastic change in weather that's giving me the worst headache of all time. That's a little dramatic. It's not that bad. Let's cut some studs. So interesting situation on this side, and I think I got a little bit of a solution for it. So this board, I measured to about 53 inches, right? Right from there to there. The reason it doesn't go any further is because the, 
that actually starts poking out. So if I ran it down, the board start to slide out and I'd rather have it back here. The problem is there's only the two ribs to mount it to. There's nothing here. This is what I'm thinking. I cut this little piece off of a junk piece. It's the same, it's the same width. And I'm going to construct an adhesive here, basically put it on this side. Also put a screw in just for added security, I think. And then it'll be attached to the big board, put construction adhesive here, and then this is gonna stick up here. Obviously it won't have the exact same integrity as one of the built-in ribs, but I don't wanna screw this in. So I don't wanna screw this in to this because this is really thin. But I know that I'm probably gonna wanna build up here. So I'm gonna want that added. So I don't want the board bending. None of this makes sense as I'm saying it, but it makes sense in my head. I only got 10% left on my battery. I don't know if it's gonna last through all this, this little uh, outro for today, but we'll see. So I've just been sitting here, planning stuff out, measuring beds, measuring kitchen area. It's really exciting, actually. Just taking a minute, hanging out with my, with my Mr. Buddy. This will not be the primary heater. Eventually we'll have a better, safer one for an enclosed space right now mm -mm. but he's doing a great job keeping me warm whilst we build so yeah this is awesome i got this side i got a row of studs done up here that side's pretty much done except for right back there on that angled whoa on that angled rib i'm gonna have to put something a little piece of the uh the stud wood just so that the wall at the Far this back side of the van is something to kind of grab onto once we get there. And then this side, yeah, just did the top row and I'm gonna call that a day for today. It's chilly and I'm hungry. So we'll finish this all up probably tomorrow. Welcome to day two of the studs. <laughs> I already installed more and I'm debating on whether or not to add a essentially third row. Come on into the uh, house and check it out. Hey, there's that screw I lost yesterday. Okay. So, not so bad, right? Again, I will stress, not pretty at all, but will be completely covered up with the wall panel, of course, as all this other nonsense will. So you can see, I still need to put a couple last ones in here and here. These two insulation panels are actually too close together for me to get it in. You can see I cut that out here. Super simple, utility knife does a real quick job of that. And then, the other thing I'm debating about is whether or not I need studs down here on this bottom section, because if the wall panels come all the way down and have that much distance of not being attached, they're gonna be quite uh, floppy at the bottom. <laughs> so I might do that, because I've got, I got uh, plenty of this. Oh wait, you wanna see here, let's create. There you go. Let's, uh, wait a second. Let's have a focus. Thumbnail. <laughs> Wait, is it? Thumbnail. <laughs> All right, that's pretty much it for this one, right? It was super simple to do this. Construction adhesive, screws, everything is up, and I can reef on all of this. Wouldn't it be funny if I did this and it's popped off right now? That noise you're hearing, that's just this rubbing against the uh, insulation board. So yeah. Once I get the last few put on, I think we're, I think we're at wall panels. I'm gonna leave this alone for a while. I'm still debating on what to do. I know I still wanna put another layer of insulation, but then I don't know if I wanna just be drilling the panel through insulation into the metal ribs. So I'm trying to find some thinner studs. I'm really worried about all of this stuff just falling apart on me, which is probably a good thing. The more you 
take your time and think about it and slow down and do a good job as opposed to a rush job, the end result will be better. I'll always have the fear that it's gonna fall apart though. But anyways, until the next one guys, just be happy, be creative, be yourselves, and be positive. I'll see you next time.